Oh, hey everyone. Uh, yes, it's warm enough to be outside. <laughs> no, I still have a cold. But I don't know about you guys, but there's so many slings on the market that we should probably go ahead and rank some of them. Well, I guess we'll start that sling series here today with the GBRS Group's second best sling. And then we can see where all these slings actually stack up and if this one's actually any good. All right then, let's get to it. So before we get too far into this, we've never ever talked about the GBRS Group or what the heck the second best sling is. The GBRS Group is a tier one veteran owned training and services organization that provides tier one training that focuses on knowledge transfer of real world tactics and experiences to military, police, and special military units. These guys are legit, and I think pretty much every one of them is a Navy SEAL who hasn't finished their book yet. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, but you know it's true. And there's some sort of internet drama about the GBRS group, but I don't know anything about that, so I'm not gonna comment on it. I know, not commenting on something I don't know anything about? That's crazy. But don't worry, I bet you there's already some cheese beard who's already typing in the comment section on what he knows. So while you guys are all reading that, let's go ahead and look at what our current ranking is for all of our slings. Well, I haven't looked at any yet, so it's blank. But I wanna tell you, I'm not a level 100 wizard. Slings can be super complex and they can be run like a thousand different kinds of ways. From CQB setups using the close attachment points to patrol and long range that use the sling for stability on the end points, and I'm so unbelievably super duper excited to hear about all the better ways to run a sling that you're gonna tell me about. So excited. But I really think the sling is one of those mastery levels of firearms and tactics. And well, <laughs> let's be honest, I'm an idiot in my yard. So we'll go over each sling in detail and then we'll go over the basics of each one and then we'll rank each sling based on price, build quality, connections, comfort and adjustment, transitions, and finally stowage and deployment. And then you can see more of the details about each of the slings and how they perform instead of just seeing me flop around in my yard. Well, let's get this series started and let's start with what the heck is the second best sling? The second best sling is a sling designed by the GBRS group that is designed to focus on the end user. The overall mantra is a minimalistic sling that gives the user the most customization options possible. And they say it's the second best sling because the first best sling would be your own uh, battle squire. No, I'm not gonna be Joe's battle squire. Get out of here. Well, let's see if they were able to hit the mark they were going for. But before we get to the test, let's go over the sling in detail. Starting with the buttstock end, we see the second best sling uses standard Kodura webbing. We see there's a ton of adjustment on the end of the stock to adjust for short or long setups. Now, one frustrating thing with this style is that, yeah, you can run it on short or long setups, but you either have this long tail or you cut it off, and then if you cut it off, you, you can't ever really run it on a long setup again. And you'll see some other slings in this series who solve this problem a little bit better. There is a simple plastic buckle on the end and a trick I learned from Arbor Arms is to place a blue or red mark on this so you remember to double the webbing over after adjustment. And you see this pre-done on some slings like how I have the webbing covering it up but it should stand out when you look at it so you go, oh, oh geez, I did not connect this up properly. Otherwise, you'll probably end up with a gun in the dirt and a sling around your neck. Moving then further down the sling, we see the GBRS logo. Well, that's easily 10 internet points. And then the sling widens out into a super comfy pad that is about 14 inches long and two inches wide. The pad is probably one of the best parts of the sling and has a great combination of rigidity and comfort. One thing I noted also is that the pad is actually good about staying in place when you make length adjustments also. 
and GBRS says the pad is designed to eliminate snag points when slinging a carbine to the user's back. Yeah, it's good stuff. At the end of the pad, we see a metal ring that connects us into the front of the sling. The forward webbing section can be adjusted by pulling the tab that also uses a plastic buckle system. And GBRS says you can cut these center bar tacks out if you want a thumb loop instead of a pull tab. Well, I don't know what I want, but that seems like a pretty permanent solution. So tell you what, we'll leave that alone. Now, GBR said they did remove all the metal buckles, so they could get the overall weight of this down to 2.7 ounces. And I don't know, maybe that'll translate to some cost savings. What, why, why are you guys laughing? Maybe it's cheaper now. On the carbine end of the second best sling, we see it mimics the stock end with the plastic buckle. I again recommend you mark the buckle so you remind yourself to double over the sling properly when size. Because if you drop your rifle in the mud, I will be the first one to laugh at you. All right, let's get to our categories then. What, uh, what were they again? Oh yeah, oh yeah, so the first one is cost, and for that one I'm gonna give the GBRS sling one star. This guy may be the second best sling, but the overall cost is more than substantial. At around $70, this sling includes no attaching hardware. So once you factor in two QDs, you're at nearly a hundred bucks for a sling. Yeah, but that label, man. Do you know how many internet fights I can win with this thing? All right, for our next category, we have our overall build quality and I'll give it a three. I have to say that the GBRS group nailed the idea of a minimalistic sling that has everything it needs done right and nothing it doesn't. I absolutely love the neck pad along with the lightweight design and the ability to change the pull tab to a thumb loop is pretty awesome. But it's also just webbing so I'm not like freaking out over the build quality. All right, for our next section is connections and I give this a one. There are no connections included and they're aren't even any connections for sale when you go to buy the sling online. So you gotta go somewhere else and make another order to get all the hardware you need to get the sling actually working. And that's pretty annoying. All right then, for our next section, we're gonna go on to the comfort and adjustment, and I give this a five. The location of the lower metal ring with the pad allows for some magic to happen where the sling stays in place nicely, even when the sling is adjusted. With all the extra webbing that can be trimmed, you can easily fit this sling to your body and weapon system. I found the pad to be extremely comfortable while also not being some huge mass that got in the way of everything. And it really overall just works extremely well. And that's a good segue into our next section, which is transitions, and I give this a five. I have this sling set up in a uh, mostly CQB configuration, but I was able to tighten the sling fully to my body and then also be able to fully loosen so I could easily transition from shoulder to shoulder without having to swim out of the sling. Now, is swimming out actually faster? Well, that's neither here nor there, but just know this sling lets you do both. All right, then we have our last section with stowage and deployment, and I give this a three. There's no real frills here, but it's easy to loosen up, hook around the grip, and then tighten back down. Then if you want to deploy the sling, just slide it off the grip and be ready to rock. But as a lefty, this stowage method can actually block the ejection port if I actually don't deploy the sling and go to use the rifle. So, eh, I don't love it. So let's touch on some pros and cons then. The first pro, it does a lot of things well without any glaring faults. Transitions are smooth and easy and the sling can be adjusted to you. But if you cut this, you, you can't really make it any bigger. I love how the sling just stays in place when you're making any sort of adjustment to the pull tab. And it's comfy, but let's talk negatives, price and availability. I'm not sure if these guys are using this group to pay for free healthcare for all, but this price is a bit outlandish. And you all know how much I complain about out of stock and watching newsletters for in stock notifications. And you definitely gotta do a whole lot of that dumb crap if you plan on purchasing one of these second best slings. All right then, let's see how this thing does in our current sling ranking chart. 
Well, as there are no other slings to compare it against yet, it gets the second place spot for being the second best sling ever. And because that's funny. Overall, I really like the GBR slings. Those things that it does, it does really, really well, and then it doesn't try to do way too much and just do too many things all at once. Even if my wallet is now annoyingly lighter. And hopefully by saying good things about their sling, they won't be as mad when I don't like some of their other stuff. That inner belt on the Assaulter is so, so bad. Well, I hope this start to this sling series was useful to you and useful in your purchasing decisions if you want to pick up the GBRS belt. And I want to say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters. You're the ones that make all this possible. And I want to say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about the GBRS sling. What do you mean the GBRS guys are definitely going to kick my butt? Just, just edit out all the mean stuff. What do you mean, no?